On October 14, 2014, a weather change on the Annapurna circuit resulted in a number of fatalities near Thorong La Pass and one of the biggest rescue missions ever undertaken in the Himalayas. It is regarded as one of the most exquisite and interesting trips in the entire world. You need roughly three weeks to complete the round. The path takes one from a height of 780 meters to a height of 5,416 meters over the Thorong La Pass. This is the highest point overall on the trek. The pass is often crossed from east to west. As it is simpler to descend than to ascend because of the approximately 1,600 meter altitude change from the west side to Mukinath. The walk is very well liked due to the route's beauty and lack of overall difficulty to complete. As a result, up to 300 permits are sold each day during the peak season. This indicates that over 6,000 people walk the Annapurna circuit all together during a season. Another reason the trek is so popular is because you may complete the walk without a tent, which is another factor in its popularity. There is no requirement for tents, heavy equipment, or any other substantial accommodations because there are so many places to stay along the route. Many trekkers walk the route alone, without a guide, as it is relatively simple, easy and comfortable to accomplish. Even though the trail is regarded as easy, not every hiker reaches the destination in good health. Around Thorong La Pass, a few hikers as well as local Nepalese porters can run into illness, or worse. Acute altitude sickness is the most typical cause of death at the pass. The main cause of this is inadequate acclimation during the steep climb to over 5,000 meters. Altitude sickness is the very illness that ended up being critical on October 14, 2014, as well. Whereas, there was news that the weather on the mountain was beginning to change, with meteorologists forecasting severe winds and storms a week prior to the catastrophe. The weather had started to change on October 12th. Making it completely unsettling, dangerous and entirely different from earlier in the week. More than 160 trekkers set out to cross Thorong La Pass despite the weather predictions, and words of caution from others. At high camp on the east side, there was already 20 to 30 centimeters of new snow in the morning. However, the visibility was not yet alarming. Giving some trekkers hopes of crossing the pass. East to west was the direction of the wind. Thus, the majority of hikers were propelled toward the pass by a tailwind. At first light, the wind picked up speed and people started to become concerned about the situation. Turning around on the east side now required reversing and going straight into a head wind. This felt much worse than continuing with a tailwind up to the pass. The wind began blowing so hard that the tracks of the person in front vanished quickly. At this time, visibility was less than 100 meters, and with every gust, a whiteout occurred, reducing visibility to nothing. The horizon was no longer visible after that. However, many trekkers continued to struggle to get over the pass without realizing that it would be considerably worse on the other side. At the top of the pass, where the wind was the greatest, conditions were the worst. The wind was magnified by the landscape's nozzle effect, which forced the wind inside like a funnel. The wind chill was said to be less than negative 50 degrees Celsius. At the top of the pass, there is a tiny tea house. As you could expect, there was no place to take refuge from the storm, and it was completely full. Many travelers that came there were at the peak of their journey. Numerous trekkers undoubtedly took longer than the typical three to five hours to cross, putting them in an even more dangerous situation. Those who had trouble acclimating here were battling not only the weather, but also the effects of altitude sickness. These symptoms include a significant decline in performance, dizziness, nausea, and a racing heart. All of these conditions, together with heavy snowfall, zero-meter visibility, and sub-freezing temperatures, are undesirable during a storm. However, the climbers had to deal with considerably worse circumstances when they descended on the west side. There, the snow was between 1.5 and 2 meters high, and the fog made visibility next to nothing. In this instance, snow was driven across the pass from east to west. On the west side of the valley, there are orientation poles. But it was impossible to see from one pole to the other due to the poor visibility. These were the perils that trekkers, villagers, and guides had to deal with.
even minor errors or injuries can have negative consequences in this scenario. In addition, many were trekking from hut to hut without tents or other emergency supplies, leaving them with no way to find refuge. Rescue by rescue teams would not have been possible. Even if rescuers had been able to arrive right away, the power loss brought on by the snow resulted in the loss of telephone and cell phone connections. It took a while to determine the full scope of the catastrophe. After three days, 17 people were still missing. In the end, a total of 518 people were saved, including more than 300 trekkers. Regrettably, 43 people passed away. Out of the 43 that died, three of them were yak herders, while the majority of the rest of the people were from Nepal. Tourists from Canada, Poland, Israel, Slovenia, India, and Vietnam were also among the fatalities. October 14, 2014 proved to be a heartbreaking day along the Annapurna circuit. That day demonstrates how Mother Nature can quickly turn a beautiful trip into a treacherous and dangerous event.